Okay, so let's talk about creating a forward lookup zone. Now, our first step was to install the DNS server and then set up the caching only. And we can run as a caching only, we just can't resolve anything on our own. Um, which, honestly, will work just fine if that's what we want. But if we're wanting to host our own name resolution, then we need to do that forward lookup zone. So here's how we're going to do this. We're going to start by editing the named.conf file. So it's going to be this. nano forward slash atc for etc, I did get that right, forward slash bind forward slash named.conf. And then we're going to come down and we're going to add a forward lookup zone down below here. And this is how we're going to do it. We're going to say zone and then we're going to give it the name of the zone. I'm just going to do dalton.local because I can. In and remember this is case sensitive. And then inside these curly brackets we're going to design the zone or define the zone. So the type is going to be master which means this is going to be the primary the master DNS server. I can set up zone transfers to secondary DNS servers as well if I wanted to, which would be very useful. But uh, right now we're going to focus on getting this one up and running. Now I'm going to set the type and then I've got to specify where it's stored. So that's going to be file and forward slash etc find name or not name. I'm just going to call this net.dalton.local. Technically, by the way, the name here and the name up here don't need to match, but it is so much harder to troubleshoot if you don't know what they are. So it makes a lot of sense, if at all possible, keep the two of them together. It will help you out tremendously. Close that with a semicolon and then close with a curly bracket and semicolon. All right, so we're going to save and exit this file. Control O and Control X. And we're out. All right, now that tells it where to find the zone file, but we actually have to create the zone file if we're going to actually use this for anything. Now, again, we have a template file. And that is in the, let me do an LS here real quick of the forward slash etc forward slash bind directory and it is um, db.local is going to be our sample so what we're going to do is we're going to copy that db.local that's it'll be our sample or our template file we'll copy that to the file that we just told it we are going to use so it's cp and you want to use cp here so mv moves the file it moves it from the old location to the new location. We also use it to rename, move it from an old name to a new name. CP creates a backup copy or an additional copy. It doesn't always have to be backup. It creates an additional copy of the file. Now I want to leave db.local here. So I'm going to do a CP rather than a move because I may need this db.local again later on. So it's going to be CP forward slash ETC forward slash uh, bind forward slash db dot local and I'm going to copy it to etc bind and then I'm going to specify the name of the file I just told it I was going to use net dot dalton dot local and now I can nano or whatever editor you particularly like that particular file Okay, here is my file. Now I'm gonna start, so this line right here is the time to live. Um, how long will an entry stay? Uh, this is, sets my start of authority. So SOA right here is start of authority. So I wanna change this to, get rid of the local host and put Dalton dot local. And this root.localhost, I'm going to change to root.dalton.local. So that's going to be the email address of the um, of the person who's responsible for it. And notice it's not root at dalton.local, it's root dot. And you doesn't have to be root, right? You'd change that to whatever you were actually using. Now we have 
refresh, retry, expire. We're going to ignore most of those for the moment since we're just doing a simple setup. But here's the big thing, and that is every time we make a change, we have to increment this um, serial number. And that's going to be huge. When bind goes to load a zone file, it will look at the serial number. If the serial number that it has already loaded is the same as the serial number in the file, it won't load the new information. So it's not going to update any information for you. Um, you need to increment that serial number. And some people just use incrementing serial numbers. Some people use date, whatever. All right. So um, in name server, this is going to be for Dalton.local. I'm going to set the address as this machine's IP address, 192.168.1.50. All right, now I'm going to set a couple of A records. So I'm going to start with one called file serve in A, and I'm going to give it an IP address of 192.168.1.101. Actually, that's in my, I'm just going to do 1.11. That'll make more sense because technically I put 100 in my um, DHCP scope. Then I'm going to create another one web serve in a and we're going to do that at 192.168.1 there we almost there we go dot 12 and those are going to be the two a records and you can do other things if you want to as well you can do c name records mx records so we're just doing a couple of a records here to try to demonstrate how this works so i'm going to do control o to save my file and then control X to exit out. Now I need to restart the service in order to see if this worked. So it's systemctl restart bind 9. And then I can check the status of bind 9 and see if it's up. And this is going to give me the last few right here, the last few entries in the log. And again, remember, I'm getting these network unreachable because I've isolated this thing a little bit. So I'm not going to worry about that too much. Now you can display the log. And remember, it's the var log, syslog file. And we can do the tail of the log. We could do, in fact, let's just do that real quick. Var log syslog. And I'm going to have way too many errors popping up right here in order to see what I want. If you don't have all of these, you should look and see that all zones have been loaded. And it will tell you which zones were loaded and which um, serial number they had. All right. So now that I've got that done, we've reset our bind service, which remember we need to do to reload the configurations. So now I'm going to see if I can test this. So I'm going to do dig, and I'm going to point it to just to specify. Because interestingly enough, sometimes I have this not work on me if I don't specify the address that I want it to go to. File serve dot Dalton dot local. Okay, that looks like it worked. It returned right here for me. Dalton.local is at 192.168.1.50. Another tool that we can use to do this, so dig is one, another one is NSLOOKUP. And I'm going to look at my server, and it's going to tell me I'm using my local server, so I'm going to switch that, and again, I just get better results here if I specify the IP address. So I'm going to set my server, and then I'm going to look for webserve.dalton.local. And it resolved to, so using this server, it resolved to 192.168.1.12. So at this point, my DNS server is up and running perfectly. All right. Now, we've got everything working. The next thing to do, remember I've got this on an isolated network. So if you are on a live network and you're actually using DNS and DHCP from your Ubuntu server on your live network, you're just about ready to go. DHCP should be solving addresses. The DHCP server should be handing out your uh, 
address for your DNS server. Your DNS server should be a um, caching server, so it's caching requests, going out and forwarding requests to internet web servers, caching them for reuse again locally. And now you should be able to edit that uh, net file and add anything else in here that you're going to need for local resolution. So it should be up and running now since I am done with it this, this at this point. Uh, I don't want DNS and DHCP to continue to function on my network. So I'm going to sudo isc whoops, systemctl disable isc DHCP server because I don't want that to continue to run on my production network. And then I'm going to do the same thing with bind 9. All right, and if everything works right, let's do systemctl status, I'll do bind and right here on the line that says loaded, it's still running at the moment. That's not what disable does. If you look over here and load it and run all the way across that line, you'll see where it says bind to nine dot service semicolon disabled. That means the next time I reboot, that is not going to be a problem for me. That's going to be disabled from that point on. Okay, I reset my IP addresses, reconnect to my physical network, and I am ready to go.